Okay, Bob, we're recording. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, uh, this is uh, the Finance Committee meeting. Uh, I'm calling it to order at 1031 a.m. Uh, we're going to be reviewing uh, the Fire Department and the Crest Department uh, today uh, as part of our review of the budget. Um, as this meeting is remote, uh, there were many um, actions of the state legislature. So I need to first go through our list of counselors and uh, resident members to see whether they can still be, you can be heard and uh, I can hear them. So I'll go through uh, Bernie. I'm present. Um, Councilor Haneke. Present. Kathy. Here. Andy. Present. Alicia. Here. Great. And Matt said he was not going to be here. So I think we have everyone. So uh, I'd like to start with public comments. So if anyone in the audience wants to make a comment, uh, please do, please raise your hand. I see two hands raised. So I think we'll give each person uh, three minutes. Uh, so Athena, do you wanna bring uh, Martha in? Thank you. I'm Martha Hanner from District 5, speaking as an individual. Many of us are concerned about the future of CRESS and the level of its financial support. CRESS began two years ago with a very dedicated director and eight responders. Then a year ago, the director left and things kind of fell apart. In hindsight, one of the problems was the lack of a qualified assistant director too much burden was placed on one person and there was no backup. Now here we are with press phase two and a new dedicated director, but it's the same level of support. Mm -hmm. To move forward in the future, I think Cress needs an assistant director with the necessary qualifications to support and assist the press director, coverage of the hours when urgent calls occur that's reference to the LEAP report. Mm -hmm. Crest needs to staff the evening shift seven days a week, not just weekday, daytime hours. And again, that leads to the need for an assistant. And Crest needs a physical space of their own available and accessible 24 seven. The third floor of Bangs Center is not very accessible and Bangs is closed to the public evenings and weekends. It's unfortunate that the interim team did not report their recommendations publicly and to the council. In the public <laughs> statements I've heard the interim team make, they clearly identify the need for a professional assistant director separate from the current administrative assistant who does a great job with the day-to-day -day details. I know the finance committee does not have the power to change the 2025 budget today, and that's not what I'm asking for. However, I do request that you take some time today to discuss seriously what support does CRESS need to succeed for the long term? You know, is there a long term plan? And make your recommendations to the council in that regard. With the current budget, I believe that CRESS is stretched too thin for the job it's expected to do. The town made a commitment two years ago. And it's time for us all to really think seriously about that. We owe it to the eight dedicated responders and their wonderful new director, as well as to the community at large to keep this important program on track for the future. And I hope that you as the finance committee can work for the long-term to support that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Tina, can you bring uh, Tony in, please? Hi, thank you, Tony Cunningham, District 1. Um, I'm speaking about the library project. I want to plead with members of the Finance Committee to get up to speed, if you're not already, on the financials of the library project. And please take action to get this item on Monday's Town Council agenda. 2.3 million, more than 2.3 million, has been spent on this project to date. 
This money has come out of the MBLC grant installment of 2.7 million. This project is costing about $100,000 per month. Every month it continues. I see in the library trustees packet for Monday, a motion to send the MBLC a letter requesting a six month extension on the construction start date deadline of June 30th. Since the town is the grantee of the MBLC grant, I would ask why the trustees would be sending such a letter. Shouldn't it be the town manager with direction from the borrowing authority, the town council, if such an ask is to be made? If an extension is approved, you're acknowledging that we could be spending a half a million more on this project and still not getting anywhere. Um, in addition to the 2.3 million spent already, the capital campaign has spent over 400,000 in raising their fundraising. This project needs to stop now, it's not viable and any inaction on the part of the finance committee and the town council is approval to spend more than $3 million on this project that's going to have to be paid back to the MBLC within 60 days of withdrawing from the grant. We need to figure this out now and we need to stop the spending and, and hemorrhaging of money. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, does anyone else in the audience uh, wish to make a public comment? I don't see any other hands, so I will close the public comment period. Um, and now we can move forward with uh, the fire department uh, budget. Um, I see Chief Nelson is here and uh, Mr. Olmstead. Um, I don't think we need any kind of introductory comments unless you want, wish to give them. I think we can just yeah, so we can we can go them. right 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 into the questions. Uh, Assistant Chief uh, Strom 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 Strongman took took ill, so he's he's not 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 here here to, today. So, but I mean, you know, I think we, why, do, why don't we just uh, jump, jump in to, to it? All right. So, um, uh, you guys, did you, we, did you get ahead, the, uh, Yes. Yes, we did. You got the we, question. Totally, so why don't you just go through the questions and, all right. and just, you know, your yeah, comments. And, Right, we're we're gonna kind of you know tag tag team both go go back back and forth build build off off each each other. Uh, your first quick question was about the hazard mitigation plan, and that uh, we're you know we're re redo we're we're up updated day 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 dating that we were able to get a grant grant to uh, uh, to support support that. So the Pine Pine Valley Planning Commission is going to take the lead, as as they did the last the last the last time. And that uh, that that whole thing uh, takes uh, it'll it'll take about six, six months to to a year to get to get it fin fin finished. But throughout out that there's a ser series of me me meetings public me 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 meetings where uh, where the public 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 is invited invited to make make con 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 comment and that type of thing. And we'll re, re we'll uh, re, re review where 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 we were. Where we are now and where we need need to be in in the, in the, in the future. We updated every five years, I believe. So one of the good good things, of course, is the fact that we were able to secure a grant to pay for the whole the whole the whole whole thing. We we're 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 responsible for uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 percent since the grant, which come about amounts to about thirty 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 two hundred dollars 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 dollars. The dollars. rest is being paid paid for by by the feds. So, and you, you mentioned, for instance, uh, folks on uh, Pom, 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 Pomeroy Court. That's one of the things that we'd want to hear, 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 hear about, because thing, things have changed in the last five years. Those, those are the type, and that and that's why we have have these pub, public me, me, uh, meetings, so folks can uh, come out and talk, talk, talk about what what their what what their concerns concerns are, and and, and we're talking about. Uh, man, 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 man made have hazards and nat natural have, have, have hazards as well. And as I said, things have changed in the last five, 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 five years. So this, this will be a good, good chance for us to, up, to up, up, update the plan. Yeah. And I have a personal interest in, in, in the plan chief. So, uh, okay. Please keep, have, yeah, well, keep they, they, informed, they, uh, yeah, but well, PVP, PVPC does a really good, good job, 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 job. At this, like as I said, they kind of take take the, the lead on 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 this and guide guide us through through the process. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. All right. Great. 
Uh, let's see. Your next, your next one's about uh, availability of call qualified per, 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 per personnel. Uh, and then, then the call, call force and students, students force, I guess. Uh, that's that's a nationwide issue. Trying to find qual qual qualified for 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 personnel. People don't. In the last few years, folks have kind of shied away from getting getting involved in public. They say save save save, and we've had to kind of pivot pivot a bit on on how we 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 recruit. Used used to be, you put a, put a, put 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 out an ad, and we had folks bang 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 banging down and down down the door. To come, come and join, 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 join us, and and we we hire uh, paramedics. That, that that's our that that's our our stand, stand, standard. But that's changed now. What 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 we've done is we'll we'll hire folks that are b b basic e EMTs, but they have they have have to be enrolled in in par par paramedic school. And once and and uh, the caveat there there is that we'll we'll uh, bring bring them in, but we'll keep keep them and send send them to to the academy once they complete medical school, and 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 make and make that that commitment, and we'll commit to to keep, keep keeping them. So, but that but that but that's that's an, an issue that's that's nationwide, you know, and and we're competing against every, everybody in Western Mass. You know, for a very small pool, and it's it's a small pool, and it's a small qual it's a small pool of qual qualified folks as well. That's that's the tough tough part finding the qualified people. You know, we've 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 been we've done pretty well. Uh, this is a place that folks want to come 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 to work. They want to come and work 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 for the, this this department. Our, 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 and I like I like I like to say we are the gold 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 standard standard for Western Mass. So, uh, <clears throat> Jeff, do you want to jump to jump in here? Sure. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? I'm sort of doing two things at once. I'm at the UMass graduation for graduates, so I just make sure you can hear me. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so to piggyback on the chief's uh, comments, uh, yeah, we've adjusted our hiring format over time to meet the times. COVID really had a lot to do with some of these changes you're seeing in the world of, of public safety and uh, healthcare in general. Um, so regardless, whether it's doctors, nurses, primary care, I think we've all seen the effects of that in our own lives. And that trickles down to the world of, you know, pre-hospital uh, medicine as well. So we've been very fortunate. Uh, we've tapped into a workforce a little bit. Some of those are student uh, firefighters that graduated um, that we've been uh, familiar with. A number of them work for us as temporaries to help fill, fill some vacancies. Um, and it's been a successful format. I think that's one of the advantages we have over some other communities. Uh, so we have a, a workforce that does work for us that we get to be introduced to. And it's more than just somebody that you meet and an interview and a resume. So uh, we're gonna continue to kind of work through that uh, as we go. Um, the other thing too, is that uh, the workforce is savvy. They are able to read contracts and they look at what they can make, how they can support their family, um, you know, what's the short-term and the long-term. Um, so there's a lot of competition for the same people the chief mentioned. So. That's uh, Ludlow, Longmeadow, East Longmeadow, Chicopee, uh, Northampton, Hadley, um, you name it, across the Western Mass. Those are people that we're competing with for the same uh, high quality folks. Uh, it's a little different than when I started in 1994 where there's 206 people that applied. Uh, the last application pool, I think we're you know, trying to get three people and we probably had about 10 Maybe, Apple, yeah. maybe it's a different world. Um, and we're trying to adapt to that world that's around us. You also asked about the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the call, the call force, and that's and that's and that's another uh, thing that's an emblematic of what's what's going going on around 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 the country. You know, the call the call force is you know they're a part part time uh force and base and they still work full 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 full-time jobs and we've seen seen this trend for the last 10 10 12 years where you know employers are really reluctant to allow their people to leave 
to support port their communities and that and that and that, and that type type of thing so it's 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 hard to recruit for for for, for the call call force it's 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 been a challenge a challenge for for us i mean the folks that we have are de 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 dedicated and 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 they care they want to serve their community but the thing is trying to find more 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 folks like like, like that and that's just the world we live in and it and and it's hard it's 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 really tough so, but but we keep 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 pu pu pushing to get you know to bring those really good folks in so all right uh so you uh, we're at number four uh just uh okay yep yeah. uh students students student, student force and that's kind kind of the flip flip side uh the student student force has been in we've They've 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 been in service service here since nineteen fifty five, I think, about about in there, and that we're we're you know uh, recruit recruiting is good. Uh, students want 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 to be, be be a part 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 of that. We're you know at times we turn folks away, you know, because they're they're really excited excited about being part of this and that and that type type of thing, you know. And they're young and and they're exuberant and you know they want to do. They they want to save 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 the world. So that so that's that's a good good thing, and a, a lot of our per, 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 permanent folks began with with the st student force, uh, and that's that's some, something that, that that we're proud of. Assist, Assistant Chief Strom 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 Stromgren was a student student force mem 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 member. We got and as I said, we got a lot a lot of folks here that that were members of, of the student student force. So they're. They're 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 one one of our shining 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 lights here. So and you know them and the call call force they act as a supplementary force to the to 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 our um, our perm, 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 permanent force, and to as the assistant, assistant chief Holmes had said, you know it gives us a chance to to see see them, to look 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 to look look at them. And 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 bring bring them along, and a lot a lot of them end end up being uh, join 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 joining us on the on on a per per per, per, per permanent force. So it's 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 a really good good thing for for us. So. Uh, I think the next thing was uh, lost lost time in 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 injuries, I believe. Um, it's not, it's not so much that the, in the, in 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 injuries have been go, go, go going up, it's just that we're keep, keeping be, 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 better track. Uh, some time back, I, 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 I made it, I put out a directive, you know, uh, we need, we need to keep track, track of all in, 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 in injuries, not just the big, the big, big ones. But anything, and part part of it was just to kind of kind of keep track and see see where our trend trend tre trending was going. See if there are some th things we need to be be more more aware aware of and that type type of thing. But all all, all also, I wanted to de to demonstrate that a this is a dan 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 dangerous profession. Folks get hurt, and the other piece of this is that you know folks folks get get hurt. They 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 get get nicked and that type that type of thing. But they still come back to work. They still can come in and do the and do do and do the job. So it's kind 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 of two twofold, um, and and a lot of, a lot of our injuries are just just for report, reporting per, 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 per purposes and just to kind of keep 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 track of trends and see if we can if it's anything that we need to be, you know, hyper hyper folk 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 focused on. So that's so that's why you've seen the in in the in, the increase. We're doing a better job at reporting them. And keeping 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 track of our injuries. Uh, Jeff, you want to add anything or? Jeff, no offense, I I muted you because there was some noise coming through your mic, so you're muted now. There, okay. Sorry about that. That's the uh, graduation. So I think the other thing to point out is that we commonly think of these injuries as being physical in nature, and many of them are. But as time has gone on. Uh, it's become, you know, our awareness of, of mental health of our uh, workforce has increased and some of these injuries can be uh, mental health related as well. They're not exclusively physical. Um, so there's a couple of these that, that are in there. 
um, that you might see long term that are reflective of that. And it's really just an acceptance, uh, an understanding of the other dangers that uh, occur in the work that we do. Right. And that's sort of some, something that's coming, coming, that's begun to grow in, in the fire, 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 fire service, service, service. Uh, we, we, we noted and noted and noticed it a while, a while ago, and we've been to, to, to taking steps to address, address that. And, and it's, it's a grow, growing issue within, within the fire, 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 fire service. Cause you know, you can't, you can't see it. You can't. If you'll feel you can't smell smell the smell smell it but it's there it's 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 just just the same same as uh brave 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 breaking an arm it's an in, in injury that comes about from your service service service, service. so we've been paying, paying very, very close close atten attention to to that type 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 of thing thing as well uh, okay uh, where are we? Number uh, Jeff, I think this is this is your, your this is this is your your bail 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 work here to pay, pay patient con contact piece. Um, so I think when we're looking at that, I think you see a lot of the input or impact of COVID uh, in that time frame. And since COVID is finished, we had a lot of changes, and there's a lot of people that had concerns about their conditions that led us to do a lot of. Uh, treat and then ultimately decided not necessarily to go to the hospital. It was a tough time. There was a lot of new understandings of, of the world around us. Um, so I think I can generally put most of that, uh, you know, peak in FY 21, 22, back to the COVID times. Um, and then we've gotten back to a, a level that is more cons um, consistent with uh, how we operate in Amherst and the type of patient loads and the patient calls that we get. I, uh, I understand your reluctance to transport people to hospitals during that time. <laughs> actually, that's not that's actually not how um, that would be an important thing. So thanks for bringing that up. So when someone calls 911, we as the uh, ambulance service do not select if they go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, if someone wants to go to the hospital, we take them to the hospital. The decision making is ultimately up to the patient. Um, so we do not subjectively tell someone they can't go to the hospital ever. That is not how we operate. So if you call 911, we're going to come. We're going to evaluate you. We're going to try to give you our best uh, options and for care and treatment. And during COVID, there was a lot of times where people were also reluctant to go to the hospital for a while. If you remember back those that far. Um, and sometimes they chose different pathways to care for themselves or see their primary care or go to a health things that they were uh, capable and competent to be able to do. So it's just a different uh, different way to look at it. But I do want to make sure people understand that uh, the ambulance service of Massachusetts, we do not subjectively uh, tell people that if they could go to the hospital, we are happy to take you if you'd like to go. Thanks. Bernie, you have a comment or a question? Sure. Along those lines, um, and we'll, we'll be talking to, uh, well, where did I go? Uh, we'll be <laughs> we'll be talking to Cress later. Um, the um, uh, Within that group of, of uh, patient contacts, treat, no transport, are there a number of people who could benefit from uh, follow-up and assistance uh, from from Cress and a, like a home visit kind of thing. How many of these people are are, are folks who uh, uh, are calling for reasons that are predominantly not medical? Is what I guess I'm getting at. That's one question. The other question is um, um, would uh, uh, would relate to to the uh, EMS interactions with Crest and and, uh, and the potential there to uh, to assist uh, assist Crest or be called by Crest when uh, when certain situations arise I'm thinking of other community based yeah, responders where uh, they they work uh, hand in hand with uh, the fire with with EMS more than any anybody else well, I am 
Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try to Bernie answer your first question about the, the numbers. So once, so at the answer to your question is I think the follow up is actually one of the most valuable components of what Crest can can do. The thing that EMS in general is good at is is taking care of people that are acutely ill. Um, are injured or need transport to the hospital. The thing that we don't have the capacity to do is to follow up with them tomorrow, next week, the week after for making sure they're compliant with their medications and they're getting to their doctors, they're caring for themselves well. It's not how emergency you know, ambulance services are set up. So I think that's a valuable uh, resource for uh, job for press. As far as numbers, I don't have a hard set of numbers, and I certainly wouldn't want to use COVID time numbers to try to integrate that conversation. I don't think it's it would be kind of an apples and oranges format. We do do a fair amount of uh, mental health calls in our in our system. They kind of come in two flavors because Amherst is diverse in a way of um, we have a lot of young people at college, so we have uh, mental health cases that we have on the campuses that might look slightly different than they do for the adult population often in the town side. So uh, we function in both of those spaces as well and work well with the uh, university and uh, folks in town. Yeah, um, we, we, go ahead, please. We certainly wanna, wouldn't wanna look at the pandemic numbers. I mean, that, that's a pretty dramatic bump up in, in calls um, and hopefully things will continue to calm down um, because those are, uh, it, and it, it, your, your point is well taken that when you're called, you're called, you respond, you don't get a, the opportunity to sort of through and say, hey, you know, this person is called us just last week because they sprained their ankle. We're not going again. You can't do it. You got to go. No, sir. So thank you. Uh, and we do note that Chief Nelson is doing short time here. So uh, uh, this is the last time he'll be going through this process. <laughs> and but he's still hanging in there. He's still. Hanging oh, yeah. Oh yeah, best Thank best you. job best job in the world. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, the other the other key pieces you're talking about, you know, that's that's going down 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 the road. There's a you know there's a move in, com, coming from the west, which is sort of for community pair 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 medicine, which would involve that type type of fall fall follow up, you know, and and you know, and there's a fine line, you know, where you, you, where you, you know, where you're on, on the e, the e, e, EMS side, side, side of the house. And then the, I don't know, for want of a better phrase, the non e, EMS where, where, where Crest would, would fit, 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 fit in to do those type, type, types of fall, 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 fall up. Those are things that we're, we're, we're working on and trying to figure out what is the best way to approach, approach that. Again, it's, this, this is all new. So we're going to, you know, we're going to, crawl walk run so but i think in the in the end we'll, we'll end up with some 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 something really good where you know the uh collab collab collaboration between us and crest is going to be great great uh kathy and and council mannequin have questions kathy um yeah this this actually that was a... jeff can you can you okay there I'm you go just... Yeah, I, I muted you again, Jeff. Sorry about that. So this is a follow-up because that was a great segue, um, Tim, to um, the community medicine or the paramedicine that's listed here. Um, to what extent is that a service? Uh, I've got a, a several part question linked to that. Is that a service that one could bill? Um, so if you think, you know, the, the COVID numbers may have been were an anomaly, but one of one of the things we saw across the country, not just in Amherst, is a decrease in emergency room use and hospital use from people who could be treated um, mm -hmm. at the place they were living. They didn't, you know, the super serious ones went. Um, and some of that is this community medicine side. Um, to what extent is some of that billable or potentially billable? Um, you know, working with primary care doctors that they know you're doing that, and then with Cress. And I'll just give you uh, the one thing I know from a couple other countries. Um, the Netherlands is the best example of it. Uh, they they do urgent calls that are like they look like a mini amb ambulance, but it's 
it's a, a Prius or a small car, but it's got oxygen in it. And they go out and they assess. And for the most part, it's been able to treat someone in their home rather than, and this is night in the evening, you know, so elderly, um, which we don't have anything like that. You know, we don't have anything, but, but you all are, you, there's some evidence in your call volume that, there were patient contacts that didn't need to go to the hospital, at least during the COVID period. And could we capture that? Um, it's less wear and tear on peace. So I don't, you said it's starting to evolve, but yeah. I don't well, one, where, one of the I big, big where it potentially goes is what I'm well, looking. Yeah. Well, one, you know, one, one of the big, big pushers of this is, is, is are the, the insurance, insurance kind of, kind of companies because they're trying to reduce hospital visits. So that's and it's coming from the West, and that's and it's gonna it's gonna evolve, but that but you know essentially it it would be a case where you were work, working with with insurance insurance companies and that type 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 of thing and build and there there to be some kind kind of build billing structure structure I'm sure, where it you know because you're preventing that that expensive that hospital visit there there be some sort of bill billing structure but that's. You know, this is this is Massachusetts, and there you were a bunch of stubborn Yan 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 Yankees. So that that will take take time uh, to ha happen. Uh, Jeff, you, you you're 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 pretty well 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 versed in this. So why don't you jump 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 in there? Yeah, thank you. Um, first piece is by regulation uh, from the state of Massachusetts, ambulance services can only transport a patient to an emergency department. They are looking at alternative location for transport uh, that might be more applicable for certain people and certain conditions, but currently we don't have an option. Uh, but we're hoping that they can change that. We're starting to see some community paramedicine programs start up out east. And to answer your question, Kathy, payment is a struggle and pay probably one of the biggest things holding us back right? Because we just can't pay for the staff to come off the line to be a standalone community paramedic and not have a way to bill for some of those services and offset the costs. And ultimately, that's really what EMS billing is. It's an offset of our overall budget, not necessarily a replacement for. So we're looking at hopefully changes to state Medicaid rules. If you looked at like Minnesota or some other places, they changed their rules there so they could actually bill the state for some of those services and it made it a more viable uh, statewide option. So I'm hoping that Massachusetts will follow in some of those footsteps. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Haneke. Thank you. A, a similar follow-up question on the, the, the medical and sort of assistance pieces. I noticed in the police call log, medical assists and mental slash med assists were over a thousand calls in the year. Um, are those all, are those thousand times, times where a police officer shows up to an EMS ambulance call? Um, and if so, how do, is there a possibility, I, I thought Cress was supposed to be responding to those, um, at, if Cress is available and it seems like they might not have been, but is that a possibility where we can move those services away from police medical, mental medical assists of you, I assume it's for you you all, but I don't know, um, to press and EMTs instead of police response. Well, they, I think it's the other way around. I mean, police are go, going and they initiate, initiate it and then they're call, 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 calling us. Again, you know, Credit 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 is new. There they they have a limited number of uh, response response responses right 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 now. But that is going to grow, uh, and and I think you'll you'll see as time time goes on, there's going to be more of these calls where credit credit is going to be the one the the one one that is going to be uh, the uh, the first the first due for first for the first call. But the, again, I've said said to be before as part part of the interim leadership team. It's it's going to be crawl, walk, run. I mean, every, 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 everyone wants this done. Yeah, yes, yes, today. But this is but we have to do 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 it the correct correct way. And one one of the prime mover, movers or or prime prime things that we're we're concerned concerned about is say 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 safety of the response responders. 
uh and that's and that's what well, and that's a big part 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 of this but it is going to grow it is going to get to get get to the point where yeah it's going to shift from a uh from primary police police response to a crest crest, crest response and then if, if 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 they need us or 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 or, or the police it'll morph into, into into that but i think it's it's a case where it's just it's just going to take take time and it's going to take as long as it takes Mandy, Joe, I just want to jump on that a little bit. So there's not necessarily a linear relationship between the number of mental health calls that the police go on and actual ambulance requests. So they probably, I think in my conversations with Captain Young, they probably call us for two to three out of every 10 mental health cases they go to. So the ambulance is sort of the last at the very end, at the point where you decided that whatever uh, opportunities you have to sort of intercede or make things better didn't work out. And then they call the email sort of as a last, more of a last resort. That's where we live more than um, you'll see Crest in the police department uh, as more upfront in dealing with those cases. And then they call us usually after they've been on scene for a while before they realize that, you know, we can't fix this today and we're going to need a different option. And unfortunately the ED is not always, the emergency department is not always the best place in, for somebody, but it just happens to be the only place that we can take somebody and it might be the best result for that situation at that point in time. Okay. All right. Uh, implications of the growth of, uh, or elder population. Uh, will it, we need to increase? You know, our our biggest growth is uh, well, we 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 fo focus here on eight, 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 18 to twenty to twenty two, and above age of fifty five. That's those are our big big uh, move, movers here, and you know. I, uh, the the eighteen to twenty to twenty to twenty two age 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 group our 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 our, our response response is there are really based on uh, just the number the number the number the number the, the number of students students that are, that are here our calls go up just based on those the number the number the numbers as as the school school as the uh, school pop population grows uh, on the other the other end. Our elder elder pop pop population is grow, growing. It's you know, living, living long, 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 longer. Folks come 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 here to work. They come come here to stay. They come come here to retire. And, and this because this is a great great place place to be. There's great great health 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 care around. There there's great emergency service services. But there's a steep steeper growth growth line on our on on the elder L, 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 L side because they they expect. Good, 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 good service service as as they should, and that and that's what what they uh, get. So we so yeah, uh, our elder elder population is our biggest drive 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 driver right right and has been over the last seven to 10, 10, 10 years, and that's just a trend that's throughout throughout. Again, we're em, em, emblematic of a trend that's throughout throughout the country. Kind of, kind of, kind of and and does that Im, 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 impact us? Sure, 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 sure. It does. It it, it impacts our entire system. Uh, and you know, you talk talk about uh, does it, does it mean that, that we need we need more 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 pe 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 people more more staff? Yes, yes, yes. It does. I've I've been a proponent since I got 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 here of adding uh, of getting up to at least uh, fifth. 52 folks on 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 the line we're up we're up to 47 45 now uh but but we you know i the for us for us to root to really to root to root, really serve serves serve the community well we we need we need at least 52 per per, per personnel on 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 the line that that would give us third third 13 per, per personnel for each for each shift and that's and that's and that's a sort of struggle. I mean, and that's and that's and that's that's just the way 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 it is. I mean, we 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 picked up, we added we added four per personnel about three year year three three year 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 years ago. That's a great for for first for first step, you know. And I said said that then, and I'll say say now that was a great 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 for first for first step. 
we need we need to keep 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 go, going. The problem prob, prob, problem then was when we added the four. That that was when we got hit with trying try, trying to find good good pe 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 people. We were it was like great, you know. We we have we have we have these positions now. We can't find 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 people. It's a sort of struggle. So. But with you know with that's with that that's that, that's kind of kind of where 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 we are 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 with that. I'm I've always been a proponent of adding more 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 staff because we need we need more staff to do the job that the town deserves that that the town re, 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 re requires and de, de, deserves. So, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff. Yeah, I'll make two points. One is I think we're seeing a change in how. As we get older, people are wanting to live independently. They want to live in their homes. Uh, they want to live with family. So we're seeing it in things like additional ADU units that we're adding, additional dwelling units. We're adding space in our houses for the ability to care for our parents. Uh, and that shows up. That shows up even in fire prevention as we're seeing these plans and inspection services. So as we have more people that are older, they inherently are going to need more services and more care. Um, and that's what we're going to try to do. To the chief's point about adding more staff, sometimes you look at that just in a numbers format, 52, but I'll offer it to you in a different way, which is we really want to be at a point, instead of having only three ambulances available to the community right now, we really are a four ambulance community all the time. Um, and the only way to do that is to increase our minimum staffing uh, from eight, probably closer to 10. And when there's four shifts, uh, that's, you know, we get to, uh, we can get to 52 pretty quickly trying to just maintain, uh, you know, eight people that would cover the ambulances and another three that would cover an engine all the time. That's 10, 11 per shift. And that's without even a separate supervisor for that group of 11 people. Uh, so I, I want to put it out there in an idea of, a, of how services are affected by the numbers and not just the, uh, the overall number of what it means. So we're trying to cover four shifts and, and 8,000 hours of time every year. So that's that's a lot where a lot of us come from uh, 2,000 hour uh, office formats. Um, we're about an 8,000 hour office format every year. You know, and, and it can't it can't be lost on the fact that, you know, we are we're really a four am 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 ambulance service service service. But at at the same time, we still need to go go to fire, 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 fire alarms. We need we still 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 need need need, need to go 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 to all the all those 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 things that folks folks call call us for, which means we have we we still need need to staff 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 a fire 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 truck. So you're talking talking four am 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 ambulances. That's eight eight people right 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 there. You, you want you want to set a staff staff a fire fire truck with at least three a minimum of three. So that so that's that's part of where 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 that uh, staffing n number com comes from. We still have a lot of other things to do that 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 we're that, that we're required required to do, and then and that we should should do. So, Kathy, question? <clears throat> um, yeah, I, just in terms of um, we you you verbally described some of this to you us last year and probably the year before. I'm assuming you internally keep um, a age distribution of services as they go out and something that tracks it over time. And at one point when there was analysis of Hadley splitting off, um, I saw tables like this, in in including, um, we had an outside person look at it, but I think it must be internal data. It was looking at times of day, days of the week, and times of year. So when the students aren't here, the student volume goes down a lot. So what I'm asking for is if you have that information, it would be really useful to get it. Because yep. well, my yeah, mind sure. send, is, send, send me any, 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 any email with, with the uh, specifics and we can, okay. we can get, it, get that, that to you. Because I think, I think the, the staffing model of thinking of ambulances and EMS, when some of it is a need for home get based care, uh, uh, a visit and treat may not be an ambulance, but what you've just described is we don't have a different way of delivering the service. So right. if we've got the old way of delivering the service, which is, is really expensive because bringing them then to the hospital, which is 
the worst place for an elderly person, particularly if they're waiting, if they're um, uh, disoriented by that visit and don't need to be there in the first place. So I'd, I'd just be curious on seeing it. And, and I know the UMass has these super peaks for the big weekends. And then I don't, I'm not sure what the normal week. So I will I will send it to you, but I think it would be useful for not just the finance committee, but the council to be able to see some of that. So I, I'll I'll send you that request. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, and, and you know, you know, sure, you know, the you know, spring, spring weekends, fall, fall, we 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 weekends. Yeah, we're going to be a little, a little bit busier because stu students make make uh, bad bad choices choices choices. But we're we we're a call call college town. We we expect that 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 type 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 of thing. And I've been one to say that we can't make 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 the students students out. We can't make make you master or any of the call call colleges out to be the great the great say 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 Satan. This is this is just I mean, this is this is this is the way 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 it is. We're a call 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 college town. You know, uh, we 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 expect this type 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 of thing at a certain time time times of the year, and then we prepare prepare for it, and and we and, and we find find a way to make 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 it work with what we have on 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 uh in 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 our in our bail 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 bailiwick. So. Thank you. Sure. So I just want to point out before we go is that we're busy and active all 52 weeks of the year. There's just some weeks and weekends that we're really busy and have some bad days and some bad nights. Um, but activity wise, the crews that work for us are active and busy really almost every day. And people ask us like, what's going on today? Why do you have so many station coverage? Why are all the emails is out? And the answer might be anything more than it's just Tuesday. Um, and we don't really have an answer or why it just, that's the, it's when, just when the way call. it is. So that's when they call. Yeah, it's just the way it is. So. Bernie, you got a question? Yeah. Uh, just along the, this discussion uh, about community paramedicine and uh, keeping and folks wanting to age in place at their uh, in their homes, it, it in in Massachusetts it costs more than one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year to keep someone in a nursing home, and it would be. Uh, it, it would, would be very nice if on a statewide basis we began to recognize that and that putting uh, some resources at the local level to help people maintain their medications, to help people age in place, is far more respectful for those people and also less expensive. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's if, if you need, if, if the, the wider world needs an incentive to move towards community paramedicine, Look at the nursing home costs. You know, Bernie, we we had a we had a taste of what it was like to do home visits during COVID. Uh, we were probably one of the only groups I know of that were doing COVID shots in people's houses for those who could make it to our uh, vaccination sites and uh, working with public health and working with other entities. Um, and there's some examples out there to to look at across the nation. Um, in Oregon and some other places, Denver, Austin, different places that have very successful uh, programs, co-mingling uh, paramedics and either nursing staff or uh, even social workers. So I'm hoping if you guys are interested, we would like to be in that, but we definitely would need some support to make it get off the ground. Yeah. As, as, as a potential customer, I would appreciate having that service available. I try to keep out of your way, but, you know, excellent. Hey. Eh. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor Haneke. Um, as we talk about staffing, I noticed in your call volumes that mutual aid ambulance call volumes for out of Amherst is trending higher. Yep. Um, and so do you know what the cause of that is? And then on a staffing level, does that put an undue burden on our own staff and how, how does that all work? We're going to all, all start and I'll let Jeff, Jeff get, get to the specifics. I think again, it's M, M, emblematic of what's going on around, 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 around the country. Calls are go, 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 going up. And 
folks aren't being uh depart her depart farms or municipalities aren't able to grow to grow grow their uh their ems department department so they're lo looking for for help and that's an agenda agenda generally it i mean and in terms of under under undo do bur 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 burden uh that's a I wouldn't call call it an undue burden, but it's but but it's it's a stress stressor because because of our staff st staffing level, level levels, you know we're uh, we're we're go 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 going to other town town towns a lot. We're bringing in um, mutual aid as 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 well. So it's not just us; it it affects the entire system. All right, so it's a system wide issue. I mean, for us, we are going to do the calls. I wouldn't say it's an un, an undue burden, as I said, but uh, but I it but it is it is a stress a stressor. It is it is you know because we're 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 our, our call you know, when uh, some somebody mentioned when when uh, Hadley when when went away, we figured we'd we'd be back to our Hadley level within I think about about five five years. It took us I think two and a half to get back back to that 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 level. And, and 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 we're still 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 grow, growing so uh mutual, mutual aid is just an, it is just emblematic of what's going on throughout our throughout throughout throughout, throughout our system everybody every municipality is stressed and trying to do the best the best they can to serve serve their citizens so Jeffrey <laughs> so, so I basically want to point out that mutual aid tends to be sort of uh, cyclical in its nature. Right now, we're sort of in an upheak. So as you guys have looked at the statistics in the past, I would ask you to look at the statistics of the number of ambulances we brought in over that same time frame, especially on you know weekend nights and times that we were particularly busy, busy and we took a lot of resources from other people at different times. So it goes both ways. And right now, we're giving more than we're taking. A little less. Um specifically there are things like a private ems service in northampton that almost collapsed um and was a, a mutual aid piece for northampton for example that they could no longer rely on and began to call us more that's starting to you know, self-correct and hadley they've moved from having just a single ambulance and eventually when they get their second truck second ambulance that's at the basic level up to the paramedic level there'll be you know a resource that they don't need our help quite as much because we're going there a little bit more in belchertown they're getting ready to put a buy a new third ambulance and put the gear on that and they're trying to get the staffing to uh, staff that because they're busy and we go there a bit in, in south county which covers towns of deerfield and waitley and sunderland they have a new director there and, and he's actively trying to get a second ambulance that's available for more of that you know 24 hours a day so those are our partners around us that we work with and sometimes they ask of us and sometimes we ask of them um, like i said right now we just are giving a little bit more than we're taking Right. And, and, and again, uh, as, as just said, it's six cyclical. I mean, for many years, we, we were bring 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 in a hell of a lot more than, than, than we were send, 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 sending out. So it's kind of switched now. So, and that's just the nature the nature of the business. Uh, let's see. Uh, next one was, uh, high, 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 hybrid vehicles. We, we have, we have two, uh, they seem they were they were working well. I mean, we we talked. I think at oh shoot, we talked at JCP PC about 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 total to total electric electric vehicles for us. And you know the tech the technology is not there for us right 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 now for what our 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 need needs are. High 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 hybrid works. Uh, in terms of the fire fire trucks, that it's it's not 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 there there yet. Uh, and you know, uh, as, as as we said, uh, Jeff Jeff has 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 a high 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 hybrid response for the vehicle, and that seems seems to be working out well. So, yeah, the 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 the, the question here was uh, it really aimed at will these things last longer than the the diesel or gasoline powered? Uh, do you, I mean, 
we'll find to, out. We'll find yeah. find out, I guess. You know, but uh, our our other high high hybrid, uh, we've had that for. Geez, geez, Jeff, that that was here before I I I got got here. So yeah, that I mean that vehicle is not a highly used vehicle. It is right. largely used by prior prevention um, during you know Monday through Friday days. Mm -hmm. But the battery life, the battery is held up. I think that's one of our bigger concerns is that, you know, the, the hybrid side, how will that, you know, what happens when? Right. Um, I will say that it's probably worth six or seven miles per gallon difference, um, you know, and my basically it's an Explorer, it's an Interceptor. I think on an average, I, I probably had one of those vehicles to drive for the last 20 something years and I lived in the 16, 17 mile an hour average range for a year. And I think I'm at 23 as I drive currently. Um, and so it's worked effectively. Um, and I was grateful that they had the, you know, the vehicle on a, a lot at the time that we were looking. So it's hard to find these days. Yeah. Well, just as, you know, as we go forward, it'd be helpful to, to, to see if they were, they're actually sure. lasting longer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, Jeff's. Jeff's is, is is the first high high hybrid that we had. That is a response vehicle. So we'll get to, we'll get some good good data data from 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 that. I would think the police department, you know, in the volume of driving and miles and hours they put on their well, vehicles would be a great place to yeah. really get the, good hard data. We have the same question for the police department. <laughs> but I mean, it was just it's if we can, you know, if we can of. If we don't have to replace vehicles as often, it'll save right. a lot of money and sure. to do different things. So, sure. All right. Uh, you're talking. Then next was uh, about the uh, communication system, and that that's a piece where uh, it was getting getting to the end 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 of life. It's a <clears throat> a dual dual thing. It's police and 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 fire. It'll it'll enhance enhance our interoperability, which is which is which is is the the whole holy grail. And what the other piece it's it's going to do is is fix some some of our uh, the dead the dead spots that that we have 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 in town. So communicate communication, good clear communications are 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 a key in in for us and 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 police 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 department part, part, part. so that's a, that's a great great thing again it uh the, the equipment equipment is and 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 end of life you can't get get parts in anyone in that type 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 thing we stretched as far as we can so it's it's a big big ticket but it's but it's but but it's going to be worth it well worth it in in the long the long the long run so uh let's see da, 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 da. so you, you asked about the re rest re rescue calls uh <clears throat> increase up but that what, what that what that stem stems from is that we uh some some time time ago we uh we we elected to send uh a fire fire truck with with crew along with an am am ambulance to serve certain high q q q q q Q, 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 calls. Stud studies have been done that 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 show the out the outcomes are be better when when you've got more more hand hands on site more more brain pop out power on site at, at a high high Q, 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 call. And and what the re the rest the re rescue piece is sim sim simply how 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 it's co co coded in our in our in our log logging system. So when 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 the fire truck goes on on a on an EMS call with an, an, an ambulance, it's placed in the uh, or the re rescue category. I think that is going to that may well we switched our our saw saw software, so that might change a bit. So uh, uh, Jeff, you, you want to talk 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 about about about, about that? I mean, ideally, we try to be as efficient as possible. Uh, that being <clears> said, there are certain call types that we have, you know, we believe that are, have a higher acuity and have a higher need for resources right that minute to try to stabilize a patient and make sure that they are taken care of well. Um, and it gives us a lot of different options um, that we there have to manage. But at the same time, we're putting enough resources at that minute um, 
and I know it, it, it strains a little bit of the, there's some extra miles on a vehicle and there's some extra fuel, but I will tell you that it's well worth it. I think we've seen some really good uh, responses. Um, just Wednesday, we had our annual uh, EMS banquet for the uh, Hampshire County. And I'm very proud to, we had three really good save awards that we gave out uh, to staff that, uh, they were able to care for somebody and they were in cardiac arrest if they got back. So in the end, it's sometimes more important to put resources and not be as a super efficient uh, to take care of the patients when they need it and then break those crews off uh, as we go. So a captain going to a call with an engine has between one and three people on the engine. There's two people on the ambulance. That's typically what this will look like. And they're going to certain calls like, a motor vehicle accident with injuries. They're going to chest pain or cardiac arrest, respiratory arrest, strokes, um, some kind of, you know, damaging trauma that with a lot of bleeding. That is really the basis of most of the set of calls that they're going to. And it does not necessarily generate a high percentage of calls that they're going to overall. I think it's in the 9% range. Um, so, Everything has to have context. It sounds really big, um, but when you put it down to its more practical format, um, it's a good use of the resources we have available. And also, I'll tell you, Jeff is being polite, but you know, there have some 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 count 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 counselors have kind of criticized us for sending send, sending a uh, fire fire truck along to search 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 certain calls because. You know, because of the expense, because of the fuel, and and it is and it's in that. And I've said again and again. Uh, and Jeff made, makes a great great point. We had three save awards this this past past, past week. Each one, one 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 of those had an engine that went along on 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 that that call. And the reason why that the pay 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 pay, pay patient is still alive. And can spend time with their fam, fam, family is because we sent all the resources that we should. Uh, I've, I've said before, uh, I'm I'm not going to be the one to tell tell fam, 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 family member. Well, we we didn't we did we didn't send what 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 we should because we 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 were concerned about about the fuel 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 cost. This this is about take it taking care of people, taking care of pay, pay patients, doing the most that 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 we can in an emergency situation. And there are three people that are walking around now because of what what of what what we chose 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 to do. Jeff 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 brought 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 this to us about five five year 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 years ago. He brought this to the study and said this 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 works. And so we changed we changed 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 our pro, pro protocol. So, but as I said, Jeff was being polite. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say it. this is, this is, you know, this, this works and all. And, and, you know, the fuel, the fuel can be damned. So. Bob, hey. if I'm, I may, I'm just doing a time check. It's 1134. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, I was, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, I think there was one more question from Kathy on uh, the North station maintenance and sustainability. Can you mm -hmm. speak to that, please? And and just to be clear, I did, sat on JCPC and I saw the pieces that are being done. And what I was asking about, we heard about insulation in the roof, repairing part of the roof, new floor, rug. So is there more? I mean, is there a larger schedule of things that are not going to be taken care of that are already on the capital plan list? So that... Uh, that Question was, okay. is there more that we haven't seen yet? Uh, not, not, not large things. Uh, but it's, right, right now we're at the point. I mean, we've hit the hit a lot, a lot, a lot of a large, large I, 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 items that have that have kind of gone, 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 gone by the way. Wayside. Now it's pretty much just maintaining, maintaining the build, 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 build building, and keep, 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 keeping it a good live, 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 livable space. You're muted. That answers that answers my question, Bob. You know, I didn't know whether there whether we it was now under control as opposed to a challenge. So it's getting under control, as I guess. Yes, yes, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's a 45 year old no, it's a, 
the 49 year old build, build, build building so yeah we got to keep the north station going <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so any other questions or comments from the committee um well thank you uh chief nelson and assistant chief Olmstead. uh thank you for not a problem opinion. and uh the Chief Nelson, uh, I'm a retired person, and I like to say to people that every day is a weekend, but for you, every day will not be a weekend. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate okay, it. Well, thanks very much, gentlemen. Take care. Bye. Okay, so, Camille, I, if you're still, can listen? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. I think you're on. <laughs> All right. Well, Camille, welcome. I, I haven't had a chance to meet you, but um, I'm Bob Hegner. I'm uh, chair of the Finance Committee and a town councilor. So I appreciate uh, your the fact that we've gotten you and hopefully we'll see some good things. Well, I hope so. Uh, Athena, you're sharing. We have a PowerPoint we just wanted to put up. Okay, sure. Athena, we're not seeing anything. I'm sorry, everything froze for a moment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Great. Hey. Uh, Camille, just let me know when you'd like me to move to the next slide. Okay. Well, this is perfect. Um, well, so the first thing we want to talk about from the questions is about um which one? So this one is this side. Okay. If we want to just start with we 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 sort of pre-answered a couple of the questions that we wanted to kind of just sort of front load the conversation with, and then we figured we could go through the other questions if that was helpful. Sure. Okay. So um, the first question was, what service levels do you propose, Crest, as it increases response calls from dispatch and more direct calls for services? And are there any services on page 123 that you would prefer to be directed away from ABD to Crest? Well, the comment I have is about service and service levels we propose at Crest are current call types as well as the expanded call types. On 123 um, of the APT report, we would uh, request to assist with missing persons, medical assist, and community outreach. We wouldn't take these over, but we could assist. Also, the mental and medical assist, we could work on these. It should be noticed that service levels are impacted by many factors, one of which is the duration of calls. This is a metric we will be tracking tentatively as soon as summer of 2024, as we are working with Qualtrics. You can stay on slide. Okay, you can stay on this slide. Um, so the second, the question was about barriers existing and the service levels, which we would prefer to be responsible to. Um, one of the things that I've committed to during my first month is establishing SOPs and written policy. And this is this slide is a draft of the SOPs. We'll be meeting with the GPL, that's the Government Performance Lab, on Monday and with dispatch and other public safety branches in the coming weeks. It's an important note to note that this is a big change from previous director who had a different approach philosophically to this where SOPs and policy were not prioritized and viewed as more restrictive. And here are a couple of things that we have received from dispatch. Um, as we were told by the town manager, and the department head, Crest has been approved to respond to a certain type of calls and they will add that call to our triage. And for some context, when tri triaging well-being checks, if the check involves the possibility need to enter a premise 
they default to the PD response, in part due to the fact that they can't send Crest and PD on a co-response. If the well-being check involves someone in the road, they default to PD due to the time-sensitive nature of the call. If the well-being check involves someone in a highly agitated state, they currently send PD, although this is the exact call they dispatch would like to be able to send a co-response. If the well-being check involves any ongoing violence or crime, we send PD. So I'm gonna go to the next, yeah. next, next, slide. next slide. Next slide. Athena, next slide, please. I'm gonna make it froze again. <laughs> yeah, might have froze. Athena doesn't seem to be hearing that request. Oh, she hears from you, Doug. Next slide, please. I don't know. No, I'm just seeing, Bob, that she's not looking up when we... Yeah. Athena, can you uh, unmute so we can hear you? I'm sorry. I'm having some technical issues. My yeah. computer is totally crashed for a second, so... <laughs> Athena, is it helpful? I don't know as um as like we're entered in. Are we able to screen share? We might be able to pull it up and do that if that's easier. I'm yeah, I'm sorry about this. Let me see if I can allow you to share. Okay. I'm gonna steal this for one second. Yep. No, sorry. Do we have it up if we are able? Uh, can, should I try to screen share? You can try. I'm not sure if it'll allow you to do that at the same time that I'm sharing. I'm, tr I'm trying okay. to. Yeah, that's correct. I joined on my phone so that I can play with the controls well. <laughs> well, my computer is doing what it's doing. So I'm sorry for the delay. Technology issues happen. No big deal. I tell people all the time, I'm convinced that like from the pandemic, Zoom is just tired. So every once in a while, it's like we're going to break. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and make you a co-host and maybe that'll let you share and override okay. my, my frozen sharing. Okay. okay. This is from Camille's screen. Yeah. This will stop. Yes. Okay. So let's see. Just give me one second. Sorry. So now can folks see our screen? Uh, I think it's, it's it's not clear. I mean, I didn't see anything different. <laughs> Mine oh. still shows that it's Athena's screen that is being shared. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, I want to try it for again from this will stop. Yep. How about now? Because on our end it shows that we are screen sharing. There. Can can you see that now, folks? I can see it, yeah. And Athena, is it like if I advance, is it? Yeah, you should be all set. Okay. All right. Yeah, there you go. Okay, great. Okay. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. All right. Um, uh, another question was about the budget missions, uh, about our mission statement is to serve a community, to serve as a community builder, connecting people to services and resources. The original intention of Chris was to serve as an alternative to armed response for nonviolent police calls. It seems the original mission might be getting lost. Has it? And I respond that no, it hasn't. Um, we still see or serve our neighbors in a capacity that would tie up police or others for much of their time. 
We are able to spend time with the neighbors, reaching out to resources that we have partnered with and have gained valuable relationships with other departments within town. Also, we get direct calls from town hall, the library and such, rather than employees calling the police. And I'm gonna turn this over to Pat to do, um, explain this slide. Yeah, and so there's two pieces that I wanted to mention in relation to the mission statement. So on September 19th, when the interim leadership team um, took over um, the department, um, one of the first activities that they did was a mission and vision statement um, because there was some sort of lack of clarity on that and disagreement on that. And so um, the mission statement that you have in the um, in the budget hearing is uh, in the budget narrative is what was sort of landed on. And one of the things that we're doing uh, with the Harvard Kennedy Foundation, with the Government Performance Lab, so they embed a fellow into a department, uh, and we're working on um, both some data as well as dispatch um, related things. And so one of the things that we did is we took the mission statement, as you'll see on the left hand side here, and then we kind of pulled out of that different, very specific objectives, which we really boiled down into four specific objectives. And then from that, we identified different uh, key performance metrics that are tied into those major objectives. And so right now we're in the process of sort of wrapping up uh, working on the data piece. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of the, the internal data that we have for the last six months in the department. Um, but as you'll see on the, the right hand side, um, so those are some of those performance metrics. And so this sort of speaks to uh, the question of is the mission statement being lost or not, because what we're then doing is we'll have performance metrics that then tie back into that mission statement and it'll allow us to sort of guide and check the work a little um, differently. So, and I'm gonna progress to the next slide. If it allows me to, there we go. Okay. So the next question is, um, have there been issues without a second in command? And if you look on the approved organizational chart on page 128, it has me as the director, eight community responders and an administrative assistant. Um, the proposed organizational chart would be a uh, crest director, an administrative assistant, which we still currently do not have, an assistant director, a clinician, a ship supervisor, or I was going to call them um, lead. lead responders mm -hmm. and responders. And each one of these would have a specific role um, the assistant director would be able to take over some of the needs uh, that have been going on now. Um, I, as you know, Kat was the original program assistant and now is the implementation. And Kat is the fourth implementation uh, manager uh, for this department. The first one lasted for less than a month. The second one lasted uh, less than a month or just shortly more than a month. And the third one lasted about three months. Right now, Kat's been in this role since March of 2023 to current. And as far as program assistant, Pat, um, Kat was the first one. And then the second program assistant lasted approximately one month. So Due to the lack of administrative support for the department, uh, I wanted to let you know that Kat has been holding many roles of both implementation manager, program assistant, and as well as serving on the interim leadership team from uh, September of 2023 until the day I arrived. So I wanted to get across that having additional support will greatly <clears throat> enhance our department to be able to stand up. We are public safety with 10 full-time staff, two senior tax write-off volunteers, and have an administrative support, an assistant director and shift supervisors will allow the department to support the work that is being asked of and expand on and expected of. Next one. So, right. So if you look at this, this is an aggregate Crest department from November, 2023 until the current. Yeah, so uh, we had some questions. Uh, the sixth question that y'all submitted to us was around looking at some of the CAD calls. And so there's a couple of different pieces that we just wanted to share with folks. And we kind of anticipated that there'll be other 
um, questions in this uh, in our time together around this, but um, we're essentially uh, right now we're sort of on a on a second version of our data set, and so the data that you're seeing before us we launched November sixth, um, and it runs until current. We run monthly reports, so this um, all of this data is through April twenty seventh. Um, because that's when we run our the end of the monthly reports. Um, so as you can see, this is based on our internal um, sort of systems, right? So this is our number of reports that we have, the total number of interactions that we have with individuals. This includes both one-on-one -on -one interactions as well as some of our larger scale events, and then also the number of resources that are distributed. Um, I do want to draw folks' attention to that in January, we had um, less um, sort of activity, if you will, and that's due to a holiday due to different trainings that we were putting our responders through at the time. We were also in the process of onboarding three new responders. So that was um, some of our original responders were being pulled off to help support that onboarding process as well as attend some of those trainings. And then we were also in the process of doing meet and greets with um, potential uh, director candidates. So that kind of speaks to that. And then broken down also by months are the different um, seven different call types that we are currently responding to. So this is sort of looking at our CAD metrics, if you will. Um, so I wanted to just sort of share that. And again, this is sort of the internal um, reporting that we're using now. We're using Microsoft Forms. It's not ideal. And so Camille had mentioned that we'll, uh, we procured Qualtrics and we're in the process of actively onboarding that. And so essentially with the GPL, uh, and I'm gonna share a little bit more about this in a minute, um, we're gonna be shifting what we're reporting, which will sort of help capture the work much better. And then that will then be on the, the Qualtrics system. Um, these I just pulled out in terms of some, some bar graphs of, or some pie charts, excuse me, so that folks can see by month. Um, this is kind of where kind of that falls in terms of percentages. Um, and I did we did also email over to dispatch and ask what's the total number of CAD calls that they have. Um, and so you'll note, Again, if you were to add up the numbers on the previous slide, um, it's slightly lower than this because they their data, they ran until um, May 15th. Um, but there's 356 different um, CAD calls that they have in the system there. Um, and then this is also our um, aggregate call source data. Um, and so again, an internal piece, but looking, and I just pulled sort of every other month for folks to look at. Um, it's worth noting that self-initiated calls um, fall into um, the town department sort of uh, crest category. Um, and one of the things when Camille and I were working with the GPL folks up in dispatch uh, two weeks ago, uh, we also figured out that our internally, we can also change the call source. And so some of that was impacting our data. Um, so my point is, is that we're sort of getting smarter as we're doing this, but it's, we kind of have to crawl before we can walk, before we can run. Um, and then the last piece of data that data related, and this relates both to kind of question six on some of the CAD pieces, as well as the last question um, that was submitted to us around the department's plan to assess the Crest Department and its emergency response capabilities and effectiveness. Um, and does the budget propose uh, support this? And so there's really two pieces to this. Um, one of which is that um, these are, so as I shared with you, kind of the work that we're doing with the GPL, there's 30 different proposed measurable data metrics. So we identified key performance indicators. I shared 13 of them, or we shared 13 of them here on the screen. There's an additional eight and then that are supplemental and nine, excuse me, eight that are essential and nine that are supplemental. Um, but these are then going to be some of what we'll also see as some of our services and some of the um, the other data that we'll be reporting likely in other years. Um, and as I said, we're actively building out that new reporting system. So these are the types of things that will be incorporated into that new reporting system. Um, the other thing that we're also simultaneously doing is when we were awarded the Equal Approaches to Public Safety, uh, the EAPS grant, um, and we'll talk a little bit about what that funds and things like that. Um, they didn't really have any metrics that they were requiring of us. And so we sort of, when we went out of the gate, we were like, what should we be collecting? We're actively meeting with evaluators at the state level now um, to sort of see what they're collecting from funded municipalities. That's the end of that. That's the end of the slides. 
Um, so uh, question seven was speaking about the school lunch monitoring and if it fits into Crest's purpose. Um, does this prevent Crest responders from more fully being an unarmed emergency response department? Uh, first comment I have is that we are um, civilian um, response department, not necessarily uh, emergency as in that we do not respond with lights and sirens. And in this case, the schools have a dire need this year due to a number of different factors. And this role was taken on after the interim superintendent spoke to the town manager and sought assistance. Um, the agreement between the department and school stated that it would be active when possible. This week alone, we have not been able to go for two days because we were short, people were at um, other obligations and trainings. And you know, speaking to the school, they understood this. Um, we have prioritized the work of the department. And the thing about being in the schools, this has led to other youth connection opportunities. Um, we are able to talk to the students and bring them in and have them understand that we are a resource if they need us. And also we had a call from the principal. I had an email about Village Park about how situations at home and in Village Park were impacting the students there, which then impacted them in school. And having us at the school and able to talk to them and also being able to go to Village Park and talk to them has is making a difference. And one of the things, initiatives that we're working on is working with students over the summer and creating a program where we, per the LEAP report and, was it the, the community, community working safety, group, community safety working group, yeah. The community safety working group um, on youth empowerment. So these are all things that are in the process. Um, number eight was talking about my vision for the role in public safety and what services do I see us providing and what types of emergency dispatch do you see us responding to? Um, and what percentage of time should be spent on each? Well, right now uh, we are going to um, assist, but going more to uh, on 123, the mental medical assist that Chief Nelson also talked about how the fire was going to um, assist citizens, depending on the nature of the call. Once again, if there's any kind of violence or weapons, we're not going to go. Um, we could be a resource for missing person and um, and some of the other calls that we're that I don't feel that we are um, trained for is like the per the leap and the CSWG the working group um, in that report wanted us to go to nonviolent domestic uh, violence disturbances but by their very nature DV is violence and I don't feel that my responders would be safe in that kind of situation and I know speaking with police that those are one of the most um, scary types that people can go to. Um, let's see. Number nine is about the library diversion. Um, the types of calls we're handling there are people that are sleeping in the entrances, uh, and being able to go and help them and offer services, um, people having uh, difficult mental health issues and being able to pick them up, take them out of the situation and just be able to talk to them and ease their fears. Also, we have a great working relationship with Craig's Doors, the Emmer Survival Center, and we have a resource guide that we're working on with other people. And it's all about the relationships, being able to call someone and be able to sit there and say, I'm sending this neighbor to you who's having this kind of problem. What kind of services can you offer? And having them be able to just be able to have a warm handoff to say, this is the person and they don't have to go in there cold uh, with no information. Um, I think that was the next one. Yours, the last one. Assessments. Yeah, and, and the last question, which I know we shared um, a, a slide on, um, but regarding the 
the department's plan to assess the Crest Department and its emergency response capabilities and effectiveness? And does the budget as proposed support this assessment? So one of the things that we requested was if we could also show this year um, what our uh, equal approaches to public safety grant support. So right now, um, if you look on, I forget the exact page number, sorry, but uh, it is page 130, you'll see that 96% of our, our budget is really for personnel. And so that public health, that Department of Public Health grant really supports a lot of our operations right now, a lot of our um, programming um, and sort of other expenses. So things, you know, we can we can mention what some of those are, but that grant um, has been instrumental in allowing us to stand up in the ways that we've that we have. Um, and then the non-fiscal grants that we've been a part of and that we've received, I know that was something that was mentioned in one of the earlier questions, um, has been really helpful. So the Harvard Kennedy Foundation, for example, has been really helpful in terms of their technical assistance, as well as the council state government in terms of also understanding sort of on a national level, um, how other alternative response programs are navigating some of the same issues. Um, yeah. Okay. And I just want to say, day 29, I am happy to be here. <laughs> Anyone have any other questions, uh, Bernie? Yeah, thank you, Bob. Um, Camille, welcome. Um, hopefully, uh, there'll be a day 579 or something like that. <laughs> uh, we, we like to keep you around. Uh, let me just say I agree with you completely about domestic violence, uh, that approach. Uh, you're, you, you know, you, you're in a situation where at least one of the parties is, is disinhibited if not by substance, by blood pressure. Um, you're in a situation where you're confined and you don't know what's around the next corner. And you're also in a situation where there's plenty of weapons. Um, don't have to be firearms. It can be any kind of heavy object so uh, or any object. So that's a, that's a wise choice. Um, I also agree with your, uh, your, your need for a clinical component. Um, my question would be, have you... Um, what what at this point is Crest's relationship with uh, the DMH funded vendors, where you might need to have someone be provided with uh, some kind of uh, uh, emergency support or respite? Um, have you encountered those kinds of cases? And 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 are you know? And you've got. I was joking with you before about your twenty page uh, to do list. I think I probably underestimated the number of pages. Um, have you had the opportunity to do that to uh, to to begin to look at other uh, emergency service providers in the area? Well, one of the things we're doing is also is the all these acronyms DCC, the uh, Division of Community Care. It's the Northampton um, Alternative Response that's in the public mm -hmm. health, and they're rooted in public health. So some of the things that we've done is work with them um, to because there was a neighbor who was having some difficulty, who is actually was here yesterday and the day before. And one of the things we were able to do was with our relationship with Craig's door, was able to get them a bed um, at the hotel in Hadley and uh, provide them with some services and work with Craig's doors, their resource center, et cetera, to be able to help them. Also, we are working or trying to develop relationships to get uh, clinical support um, and working with Louise, who is the co-responder um, for the police department on just other avenues that we could take. I don't know how much your, your former, uh, how much of a role your former employer would, would play in this. Uh... But, uh, uh, you know, to, to have the ability to have a uh, mental health day program that somebody could get referred to or, um, again, a respite program um, would be would be valuable. Mm -hmm. Thank the you. The other thing um, that we've done is so uh, one of the folks that we contract with is the Wildflower Alliance. And so they run a series of different programs in the community that range from um, bridging services. So if somebody's coming out of 
a hospital stay and sort of reintegrating back into the community. They work with folks in that capacity, as well as different groups. And one of the things um, that we also did was we trained all of our responders to um, kind of understand the process too for AFIA, which is a, a very short term, a three day respite um, stay in um, Northampton. Um, but that's also one of the options. And then one of the things that we're gonna hopefully bring back online um, in the next month or so is we hosted a, it was originally bi-monthly. I think now it'll be moving to be monthly um, for a Crest social service meeting. And so that um, brought together a lot of folks from DMH, from social services, as well as different um, town department players. Um, and now we're actually gonna look to co-host that with um, public health and that also um, the resource guide that Camille had mentioned, um, we're actually going to be sharing that in that space so that we can see that so we don't want to be doing this work in siloed fashions, right? Like that's where it can kind of be problematic or you're you're repeating the same thing. And really when we're trying to serve folks, right, we want a, a more holistic kind of expansive approach. Um, and so we're, um, you know, actively working. We had a meeting two weeks ago, for example, with Craig's Doors. And we said they also shared with us their resource guide so we can kind of incorporate it and have a really robust version. Mm -hmm. And that does one of two things. We've put that um, we've put that in a QR code. So it's listed on our website now, but it's also on a QR code on the back of our general business cards. And we've also um, are in the process of printing up those cards to distribute both to PD and fire so that then when there's somebody that they might interact with, right, that's in those coming out of those kind of DMH systems or things like that, if we're not available in the moment for a warm handoff or that type of thing, they can actively also refer folks to us in that way. And there's there's kind of more there or somebody could look at the resource guide themselves, but also all of our responders are trained to really understand those resources really in depth as well. Sure. And also some of the other things that we have is we also have printed out and put on the bus stops. We've also given them to all of our resources, actual printed laminated versions. There's some in town hall so that if people see them, they can just take a picture or we can, we have left uh, brochures around town. So at different businesses. And that's the difference is that one of the things that we have that uh, responders, that emergency responders don't have is we have time. Police and fire go in, mitigate a situation and get out. We go in we are able to sit down with folks and find out what exactly their needs are. And we can take the time to do this with them. And I think that is an important part of what Cress is here for. Good. Thank you very much. Kathy? Uh, thank you. Um, and thank you for agreeing to come to the District 1 meeting on, on Sunday. Um, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> and uh, m much of what you've just presented, you could just have a few minutes and then take questions. I mean, I have a couple questions, and this is looking forward. I realize you're on day 29, and Kat, Kat has been holding the show together for a while, as the amount of turnover you just described is... It maybe is not unexpected when you're starting up a brand new program and you're training people because they didn't necessarily know what they were getting into. You, mm -hmm. you weren't bringing them from a job that was just like this one and now they're moving over. They were experiencing. So some of that is, I think, growing pains that are maybe anticipated but unavoidable. So I have a, a couple questions as you look forward. Um, you mentioned we don't co-respond at all, you know, with police. On some of the mental health or community, on occasion, would it make any sense that the, the team going out is one police, one crest in an unmarked car, and then a handoff could be that this is the type of medical mental that crest could carry it forward? Or does it need to be first put police and Crest when you said trying to work and not duplicate. So trying to think, um, and it's what's going on in Northampton, what's going on in Greenfield. You know, there are other, everyone's got their own unique model, but trying to learn from each other saying we started out this way with minor changes. We're staying in the same route, but we could accommodate. So as you look forward, because I think domestic violence is one issue, but some of the mental medical might be, um, 
we have a person living up here in North Amherst that I'm sure the police department could tell you exactly who it is, but the equivalent of a frequent flyer on an airplane, it's a frequent flyer with calls of distress um, that are uh, invasions of Martians and other kinds of things, you know? And so th they're regularly pulling in social services, but it struck me that Cress would be the long-term relationship you could potentially have with a person like that, rather than you're just coming in, responding and then leaving and winning trust. So it's trying to think of how do you pick up on some people that are already known to either fire or police. Um, and then that person starts to be one of one of yours or mainly yours. Um, the same way you're talking about survival center, Craig's doors, mm -hmm. um, and that shift. So it might not be dispatch. It, am, I, am I being clear? It may not be that you can immediately. I, I think I, I think I understand what you're speaking of. So one of the things that the um, the community social working group, community safety working group, yeah. community safety working group was adamant about was not having a co-response of a police officer with Crest due to the fact of marginalized communities relationship with the police. So the way that I have spoken to Chief Ting um, and Chief Nelson talking about things is what we would call a warm handoff. Um, so if they were called to a situation and it was something that was better suited for Crest, then we would get a call and we would get all the information and then go to this, all right? Or else the other thing that, again, working with the SOPs is determining what calls we should go to first. So that in this way, if it is someone that is, as you call it, a frequent flyer, we have the ability to get all the information from PD and then go out on this call and have a conversation with the person and see what their needs are. And sometimes it's just being able to sit and listen. And uh, yesterday I had a person here, a neighbor in here, who had some long significant um, issues and wanted us to intervene with them. Um, and what I did was I spoke to them about what our role is and how we could help them in the form of mediation. And what I think they really wanted was they wanted to be heard. And I was able to provide that by just being able to sit there and listen. Thank you. You know, and I do understand, you know, the co two people in a car, one in a uniform with a gun. It doesn't doesn't work. But New York, there are a couple of communities that are saying that they can have plain clothes. You know, the police are going out without that identification, you know, without a police car. So I just was raising it because I do understand the model has always been keep everything separate. Um, but it's also new and learning. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think the idea of keep everything separate, it's it's kind of, how do I want to put it? Yes, and. Okay. Yes, we are separate part. Uh, we are the third branch of public safety. However, we also work in conjunction with. And building these relationships is what makes it so different is that if we're having a difficulty or something like that, we know we can call APD or AFD. Or if they're in a situation that they feel that they need CRESS, that they can call us. And this is what's happening. And as these relationships are building and people are getting to know each other, it's happening more and more. So as you're seeing these calls for service, et cetera, that seem to be low comparative or dispatch calls, especially. Most of the calls we're receiving are because we have our name and number out there, they're calling us directly or walking, or walking in or an email. I had an email from the library about a, a person that has been there before that we were dealing with. And we were able to go out, pick this person up, take them out, have some conversation and get them set up again for a night because it was raining and it wasn't safe. I think it's also to steal from Chief Nelson, it's about fidelity to your role in order to be a force multiplier. And I think there's also the piece, and I think Camille hit on this earlier too, right? Like it's also about time, right? Like we're we're still really new and we have to like kind of to some degree let the model play out, which can be uncomfortable, I think, but like 
We need to learn and in, lean into the discomfort. Councilor Walker. Um, thank you. Um, so first I wanted to thank uh, Camille and Kat for the presentation. It was really helpful to have the visuals up. Um, I just have a few questions and comments. Um, as a, you know, an original member of the CSWG, a prior co-chair of the CSWG, I do have some concerns that don't need to necessarily be discussed in this meeting, but I just wanted to bring up um, about the mission statement, um, just because, and nothing, not that there's much wrong with it, but why, um, the unarmed public safety department rooted in trauma informed and anti-racist framework was listed last. Um, and that is the main focus. Um, and so I just wanted to bring us back to like the charge of the CSWG when we were looking at this was to make recommendations on alternative ways to provide public safety services to the community and make recommendations on reforms to the current organizational and oversight structures of the Amherst Police Department. And that is where this recommendation was born from is like our research into those two specific areas. So there is a reason why this is being recommended as a public safety department, as opposed to uh, public health in Northampton, because that was our specific charge. And when we were looking at and, you know, doing um, interviews with community members, what we found is that the gap in services that we're referring to was more often than not linked to experiences by BIPOC community members. So I do really appreciate um, Camille's reinforcement of uh, the marginalized communities experiencing these gaps and having those experiences and sometimes concerns with the PD. Um, but I just want to bring up that like that was the purpose. Yeah. And I oh. think there's an in sorry, th there one other thing in on this topic is there's an undeniable link between providing these kinds of services and addressing mental health challenges. So I'm not ignoring that. And I'm really happy that those things are being included and also being addressed. But I think that we are slightly losing the focus here because that was the focus and the purpose. And so like, basically, overall, I would just like to see that first. So it's not a huge issue, but like, I just feel the need as an original CSWG member to bring that up. Um, yeah. And Kat, yeah, I would love to hear your response, but I, I don't want that to be necessarily the focus of my discussion. No, that's really fine. And I'm actually, I really appreciate Alicia that you brought that up because so one of the things when we were working with the GPL folks and we were kind of going through these different objectives, um, that was something that, um, so I sat in on, I brought um, Josh and Rome, two of our other responders into that meeting so that we're kind of looking at it from a higher level and then also from a boots on the ground, the responders doing the work. And when the GPL had mentioned that, all three of us were like, basically raised the exact same concern that you did. And so we received these questions late on Thursday or late on uh, Wednesday afternoon, sorry. And we are a small department, as Camille said, with like not all the proper support. So we're mm -hmm. pulled into a thousand directions. And so I was up very late last night putting this presentation together and I took a screenshot of that and we actually had them reword that because even on that where it said marginalized, it's in vulnerable communities. And all of us were like, this needs to be centering BIPOC folks. Um, so I apologize. And I, as I took that screenshot, I was like looking through all these emails being like, is there another way that they moved this up? And it's in an Excel document, but it's like, because we added to it, because we were also saying essentially what you were, um, it just didn't get in that screenshot. And so I'm happy to share those other presentations offline or things like that. But I, I just want to thank you for raising that. And I also want you to know that that's something that we are thinking about. And even when we're looking at sort of if we get renewed for our EAPS funding, there are so many other ways that we want to think about really infusing and centering um, BIPOC in a way that I think hasn't necessarily happened um, as we'd like to see it happen. So I just want to say that, like, I hear you. And that is me editing things at two o'clock in the morning for this presentation. So I apologize. Uh, no, no worries. I really appreciate that response and clarification. Um, and then that leads me into, like, I just have a couple of quick questions. But one of them is you talked briefly about the, you know, proposed organizational chart versus, like, where we actually are. Um, and maybe you can't answer both of these questions, but one is that like, do you feel that the budget that you're given for this upcoming fiscal year supports you all enough to continue this because we're, you know, building and growing and learning um, through the next year? 
Um, and is there a plan or a thought for expanding on that in the, the coming futures? And has that been a part of the conversation? Like, do we think what we have now is enough for this year? Do we think we'll need more after that? Do we think we need more now? Um, and just like, what are your current thoughts on that in terms of the positions that you have and how functioning is looking for now? Well, as it stands now, um, people are wearing many hats and that um, responders and myself and Kat are being pulled in different directions trying to get things done. But I do know that the thing that we need most right now is an administrative assistant. And I think the goal for us would be to have an assistant director and a clinician. And I'd like to build towards that as well as expanding the hours. So again, this is a crawl, walk, run. Um, and I mean, I, any department would say we could always use some more money to make these things happen. Right. Um, okay, thank you. That is helpful. Yeah, and I think the Crest Department, when we first started originally, and I think this was part of the initial placement in the Bang Center with the renovations that happened, that there was a BIPOC-led mental health agency that was supposed to move in and start with Crest. And I'm not sure exactly what happened with that, but I think the idea is that there would be a clinician working with you all. Um, so I would definitely support and love to see that happen in the future. Um, and hopefully if not this year in the next coming budget years, we'll be able to accommodate those things. Um, I had one other question. Sorry. I had so many notes. Okay. Yes. Um, the other thing, Alicia, that I just want to add. So one of the things, um, so in October, we had to do um, sort of a comprehensive update to our implementation plan for our equitable approaches to public safety, the EAPS um, Department of Public Health grant. And um, one of the things that if we're renewed, the sort of third bucket that we'd like to work on with the Harvard Kennedy Foundation is drafting RFPs so that if we are funded, we can sort of hit the ground running to put that out. Because now that we've done the work, we're kind of seeing like what's missing or what, mm -hmm. what needs to be augmented. And so one of the things that we um, looked at is, are there ways that we can kind of creatively potentially use that funding as a short-term gap um, to, to maybe fund a clinician in some ways, if that's per diem, if that's um, full-time or what that looks like. Um, and so we're having kind of conversations around ways that we can, can get creative around that. Um, and then, you know, eventually, right, like that's the main thing is like, while the operating budget supports 96% of our personnel, eventually as you stand up and as you expand, right? And as we wanna be kind of co-equal branches and expand that will in hopefully adjust accordingly. And so we would then need to also put in place if we're you know awarded a three-year grant or something like that, how we, how we would be able to do that. And I think also going back to some of the data and the metrics, that's also the benefit of um, why we're doing the stuff that we're doing now, because right now we're not currently um, eligible for DOJ grants, Department of Justice grants. And so some of these other metrics that we're looking at, hopefully will also later on, right, because this is now happening on a national level, um, that maybe other things will also open up. So it's just, again, I just want to say I appreciate your point, And it's something that we're not only that we are aware that we want, but we're also trying to think of different solutions for how we can can do that. Okay, great. Thank you. And I have one last like comment slash question. Um, and that was on the youth piece. So like, while I'm glad, you know, our town is limited for resources right now. And so I do really appreciate sharing resources and the fact that you all are helping the school, um, because I know the school has some challenges. So I do appreciate that. Um, but I did also just want to identify that the youth empowerment piece was separate to this. Like that recommendation was like a separate one in itself, not envision that Crest would be doing the youth engagement or the youth empowerment, but that there would be a youth empowerment center. Um, and that mostly came out of noticing that there was a lot of profiling happening for youth who didn't have things to do and were wandering around town. So like not directly related to what we would envisioned Crest would do. But I think we thought more of Crest as like Camille said, the mediation and case management type of thing. So I was wondering if you could just mention quickly about if there's any case management happening and if there's like a system and funding to support the case management or like keeping track of those kinds of things. You can, because I'm sitting there thinking. Yeah, so one of the things that we actually um, did, and again, I mean, maybe um, 
we can have other conversations with you. So one of the things we were doing when we first started out some case management type things, but we actually realized that our responders are not really case managers. Um, the way that the original grant was was written was um, a, a biracial team of two with a clinician and a community responder with lived experience. And what was hired for the department um, were not clinicians. And so um, one of how we kind of looked at it, and this is when we kind of did that that um, mission exercise with the responders was they were sort of saying, you know, we can do some of these pieces, but some of it is kind of beyond the scope of our of our role and our and our training and our skill set, right? And we're still constantly looking at training and things like that, but they aren't necessarily case managers. And because we were sort of studying standing up in a public safety branch, we were sort of trying to lean more in public safety. And so that's where they kind of looked at themselves as bridgers and connectors. And so some of the work, um, you know, is they will do case management, like light case management, like light touch, and then putting them in touch with the folks that have other more robust case management services. So like a good example is our partnership with Craig's Door. So they really revamped a lot of their um, services over the last year. And so we sort of help with that warm handoff. We're still doing some pieces, but then if we can get folks as you know, Camille said, if we can get somebody over there to get a bed, they can also get a better kind of wraparound service. And so some of it was, as we do this work and as we stand up, it's also recognizing our, our limitations, I think a little bit. Um, and we're, because we're crawling before we're walking and running, um, that was one of the pieces that we kind of recognized our, that we weren't necessarily the best suited as as this kind of configuration happened to, to address, I think. Um, and if we get a clinician in, that will also help with that case management piece. So right. it's 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 a both and, I guess, right? Like it's this interesting kind of what feels like a jigsaw puzzle almost at times. And we're still trying to really hold those pieces. So I, I do really want to acknowledge that I really appreciate your questions, um, especially because you are on the original group as a co-chair. And so having those reminders of that is, is, is really invaluable. Um, Thank you. Sorry, I didn't get these questions in ahead of time, but most of them came up as the visuals were available. But I really mm -hmm. appreciate um, you taking the time to answer them and for all of the work that you are doing. Well, and thank you for thank all you. your foregrounding work to allow us to do this work. Like it's really, it's a privilege and a blessing um, to work with the folks in the capacity that we do. So thank you. Thanks. Uh, Andy? Yes. Um Thank you, uh, and I'm very conscious of the time of day and the, how long the meeting has been going. So uh, I'll try and be brief and hope that you can too. There are two questions that I had and they came from um, public comment at the beginning of the meeting. We I don't know if you heard public comment, but there was one person who spoke and raised several crest related issues. One of which you touched on a little bit, and I was wondering if you could say a little bit more, and that is uh, the coverage of hours um, should be expanded uh, from what it currently is. And uh, I, I guess, uh, and, and, she, and the person who offered the comment was also recognizing the budget constraints on the town budget, which the finance committee is ultimately grappling with as the town manager did. But um, from a programmatic standpoint, um, you mentioned possibly expanding hours. What are the hours that you would expand to if you had that option? And what do you think the staffing implication would be if uh, you were able to do that? So that's question number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one is something that when I came in along with the SOPs was talked about with the responders um, of my, my plans. So currently at day 29, um, being able to get our department grounded and everyone set after having Crest 1.0, Crest 2.0, which was the implementation team, and now with myself as Crest 3.0, I feel that making sure that we have a solid base, and again with the crawl, walk, run, is that is of utmost importance. And the plan is to expand our hours. And what I'm doing is looking with uh, dispatch to see when the times of calls are. So currently we are eight to four, 
And the next step would be to move us from eight to four to eight to eight. Now do realize that there are only eight responders who respond in teams of two. Um, and so with time off, holidays, et cetera, that's going to take some figuring out of how to do this. Um, as uh, Chief Nelson spoke of, with the amount of people that they have and the difficulty they have staffing 24 seven, you know, um, Chief Olmstead, oh, Chief Olmstead, yeah. Chief Olmstead talked about um, not 2,000 hours that the normal person works, but 8,000 hours. So it would be impossible for us to, virtually impossible, for us to do 24-7 uh, with eight people. And the other part of this is, is also we need to have um, leadership on those other ships. So it would have to be, we. There's some staffing concerns, uh, but the goal is eventually to get as much coverage during the times that are needed. So that is one of the things I'm working with, with dispatch and APD to find out what time it is that Crest would most likely be utilized. Um, I know for some it's in the morning when we have our unhoused population um, and for others, it would be early in the evening, you know, people getting home. So we're trying to work that out and figure out what hours would be best served. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Uh, the other thing that uh, uh, the caller who offered public comment brought up was uh, one sort of saying that the accessibility of the office because of where you're located within the bank center um, means that people cannot easily um come to the office um and particularly it limits uh you very much to daytime hours um i was wondering if you had any thoughts about um responding to that question again recognizing that a lot of work was put in getting you where you are and um getting the space ready for the department uh and you know bunch of constraints but was there any validity to the concern that she has uh, brought up oh it's a very valid concern one of the things is is that we are open um monday through friday eight to four and then on saturday from 10 to 6 and most of the people we see on saturday are when we are out um, in the community doing community engagement or else people will call us um, we have the number here um, also, there is a space that is proposed for us in the library, in the New Jones Library. So these are all things that are in the process of. Um, it, this is still, we're in growing pains. You know, there's a lot of work to be done and figuring out exactly where we could go. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any uh, other questions or comments? I just... Go ahead, Camille. I just wanted to make a comment. Um, we had also sent over to uh, uh, Athena um, a bunch of narratives, one a month, uh, that one of our responders, Joshua Benson, number 2213, put together so that you could understand exactly what it is we do and who we're doing. And it gives a better bird's eye view or actually a, a pigeon view of what we're doing and how we're doing it and how we are affecting change in the community. And um, I want to thank Kat for making, so staying up late and making the PowerPoint and really being my right hand. Um, thank you. You're welcome. So. I agree with Bob. I'm excited for day 500 something. I'm excited for day 500 and something. <laughs> well, thank you very much for uh, spending the time to meet with us. And uh, I think uh, our conversation was very helpful. Thank you. So does anyone else have anything else? Then I will take a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I second. All right. I have a motion and a second. Uh, I'm an I. Kathy? Yes. Bernie? 
Oh, reluctantly, but yes. <laughs> uh, Councillor Walker? Yes. Andy? Yes. Councillor Haneke? Aye. Then it's unanimous. We're adjourned. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>